Hey guys, so in the first video of our series, uh, quite ironically, we will be covering geometric series. And this is probably a topic you've seen before or studied before or perhaps never seen before, which is fine. I'm going to assume you haven't seen it before. But it's such a fundamental and important topic because we're going to see it time and time again and we're going to carry it with us throughout the duration of, of this video series. And so to kind of give a topic summary of what we're going to cover, we're going to one, understand what a geometric series is and how to identify one, two, derive and understand sums of series, three, understand divergence and convergence, and four, and most importantly, do some problems. So what is a geometric series? Put simply, a geometric series is a series of values where each successive value can be found by taking the preceding value and multiplying it by some constant. And as the name implies, the constant is not going to change for the entirety of the series. So to give an example, here we start off with 1. To get the successive value of 1 half, we multiply by a constant of 1 half. And we're going to be calling this our r value. Uh, and then to get the next successive value from 1 half, again, we multiply by 1 half. To go from 1 fourth to 1 eighth, again, we multiply by 1 half, from 1 eighth to 1 sixteenth, again, to 1 half. And since this is an infinite series, this is going to go on and on and on for infinity. So in our second example, we can actually start with a different initial value, but the premise is the same. We're going to find some factor that takes us from 2 to 2 thirds, in this case 1 third, and then this constant will always give us the successive value. So in this case, r equals 1 half, and in this case, r equals 1 third. However, we don't need to have an infinite series, nor does our r value have to be less than 1. In fact, it can be equal to 1 or greater than 1. So in one more example, we can start with 1. Our r value can be 2, so we go from 2 to 4 to 8, and then finally to 16. So in this case, r equals 2. So kind of the most important and um, most applicable part of geometric series is actually the sum of geometric series. And first I'm going to present you the, the formula and then we're going to rationalize it and discuss it. So the sum of n terms of a geometric series is going to be equal to the initial value a times 1 minus r, our multiplying factor, raised again to the n terms that were that are in our geometric series, divided by 1 minus r. So how do we get that? Well, let's think of the general representation that we can have for 1, an infinite series, and then the sum of an infinite series, or rather a geometric series and the sum of geometric series. Well, let's start off with our series, not our sum. And this is going to be equal to our initial term. Remember, a, it can be 1 or 2 or anything, really. And then our next value will be found by multiplying our previous value times r. And then again, we multiply our previous value times r, so we get a to times r squared. And we do this until we hit a times r n minus 1, n being the number of terms. And so simply, our sum is going to be equal to a plus a times r plus a times r squared. And we're going to go up to and I'm going to just add one more term, a times r to the n minus 2 plus a times r to the n minus 1. And so now we can kind of start doing some algebra in order to derive our equation. So let's pull out an a from each of these terms and reverse the order of our equation. So we have our sum of our series is going to be equal to a, which we pulled out. It's a common factor, times r n minus 1 plus r n minus 2, all the way to r squared plus r plus 1. Okay, so to continue on, we need to have this general equation in mind, or this general principle in mind. If we divide x to the n minus 1 minus 1 by x minus 1, what we end up with is x to the n minus 1 plus x to the n minus 2 all the way up to, you know, x squared plus x 
plus one. So to kind of show you guys um, how this works, just to do a quick polynomial division, say we divide x to the third minus one by x minus one. Well, how many times does x go into x to the third? x squared times. We multiply x squared by x, we get x to the third. x squared times minus one, we get minus x squared. We subtract these two, the x cubes uh, values eliminate each other, and then we end up with x squared minus one, and this process repeats. We get plus x, then x squared minus x, and then we end up with x minus one, and then this is plus one. And this is going to happen for any uh, order of polynomial you have. So instead of x cubed minus one, we could have x to the fourth minus one, and then we'd end up with a value of x to the third plus x squared plus x plus one. And so we can actually rewrite this equation here by this. Oh. So let me actually erase some to clear up some space. Oh, Clearly I'm not great with this software. But we can rewrite our sum over here by our sum is equal to a times r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. And then since we are subtracting 1, and so r to the n minus 1 is actually equal to the negative of 1 minus r to the n. And same for the denominator here, r minus 1 is equal to the negative of 1 minus r. And if you don't believe me, just plug in some values and you'll find that's true. So we can reverse the order of both of those. So we can do 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. And then that's how we derive this formula over here. And this takes us to our next topic, what is convergence and divergence? And so let's rewrite our equation. Our sum is equal to our initial value a times 1 minus r raised to the n over 1 minus r. Well, let's consider where our r value is equal to 1 half, and that our series is infinite, so our number of terms is actually infinity. Well, we realize that our r raised to the n value will actually go to zero. Any fraction raised to infinity will go to zero. And you can test this out on your calculator by putting one half raised to a ridiculously large number. It will spit back zero. And so what our equation will simplify to is a times 1, which is just a over 1 minus r. So this is called convergent. We actually converge to an actual value, since a we know, r we know, and so we're actually going to reach a specific value. Now consider the case, however, so let's do the opposite case, where r is equal to 2 and n is also equal to infinity. Well, in this case, our r value raised to the n power will actually go to infinity itself because any value that's not a fraction that's raised to the infinite power or a very large power will approach infinity and so there is no finite sum it's actually equal to infinity there is no sum and so this is what we call divergent so here's divergent and over here we have convergent and we can actually generalize this so let's generalize this. We're going to have a convergent series, which also can be defined as having a finite sum when our r, absolute value r, is less than 1, whenever we have either a positive or negative fraction. And you can convince yourself of this by doing some examples. And two, we have a divergent series when r, the absolute value of r isn't less than 1. So absolute value of r is not less than 1. So let's now apply what we just learned to a few problems. So let's consider the case where we drop a ball from a height of 1 
it comes down and bounces. And every time it bounces, it is going to only go up two thirds. Oh, that's going to be a little higher of the previous height. And so in this case, since the previous height was one, it, now the ball is going to go down, bounce, and only hit a height of two thirds. And this is going to happen again. We're only going to go up to two thirds of the previous height. So two thirds of two thirds is four ninths. And this is going to happen again. So two thirds of four ninths is going to be four over, or rather, eight over 27. And this is going to happen infinitely until essentially the ball is no longer bouncing or bouncing at the atomic scale in angstroms. And of course, this isn't, this isn't really what happens, but this is an approximation that we're going to use as an example. Well, the problem we want to solve is to calculate the total distance traveled by the bouncing ball. Well, let's just start drawing out or start writing out all the terms and then figure out what we have to do from there. So our initial drop height is 1. It's going to bounce and rise up to 2 thirds. And then once it rises up to 2 thirds, it's going to drop down again 2 thirds. And then it's going to bounce, go up 4 ninths, and then drop 4 ninths. And this is going to happen again. And again, for the entirety of the infinite series. So we can rewrite this as 1 plus 2 times the values in our geometric series, our infinite geometric series. And of course, there's going to be more terms. And so now we can use the equations that we derived earlier to solve this. So now we have 1 plus 2 times a times 1 minus r raised to the n over 1 minus r. And now we can actually simplify it further. Remember, since our r value in this case is 2 thirds, since we're only going to 2 thirds a height, that means we're going to have a convergent sum. And otherwise, if we didn't, we couldn't calculate this. It would just, the answer would just be infinity. And remember, the equation is actually a times, or a over 1 minus r in the case of a convergent sum. So in this case, the absolute value of r is less than 1. And so now we can just plug in 2 times a, our initial value of 2 thirds, right, from our geometric series, over 1 minus 2 thirds. 2 thirds over 1 minus 2 thirds will give us 2. So that's 1 plus 2 times 2 is equal to 5. So the total distance traveled by the ball, starting at the height of 1, going down, bouncing up and down, given our, our constraints, is going to actually equal 5. And you might be wondering, aren't we infinitely bouncing? Well, that's true, but once we get further and further along, the, the height is so negligible that it's not really adding to anything. So we converge to a value of 5. And now what I want to do is kind of show you that the idea of geometric series isn't that foreign, even if you've never studied it before. You've probably indirectly dealt with them. So let's consider the case of infinitely repeating decimals. So for one example, let's have 0 0.3333 repeating on forever. Well, we already know that this is actually one third, but let's show it using infinite geometric series. Well, we can re represent this as 3 tenths plus 3 over 100 plus 3 over 1000 going on forever. And why is that the case? Well, 3 over 10 is 0 0.3, 3 over 100 is 0 0.03, 3 over 1000 is 0 0.003, and going on forever. So if you add this to this to this, we start adding our threes in the correct decimal possession, a position. And so let's go back to our sum of our geometric series. The sum is going to be equal to a times 1 minus r to the n power over 1 minus r. In this case, what is our r value? What are we multiplying each successive term by? We're multiplying it by 1 over 10, right? So 1 over 10, of course, will give us a convergent series. So this sum equation can be reduced to a over 1 minus r. And a is 3 over 10 from here. 1 minus r, which is 1 over 10. So what we get is 3 over 10 over 9 over 10 
and that's equal to 3 over 9, which is equal to 1 third. And you already knew this, but did you know that the repeating decimal was actually a case of a geometric series? What I want to do now is take this same idea, working with uh, infinitely repeating decimals, and kind of generalize them and use a less intuitive example. So, for example, let's have, instead of 0.3 repeating, let's have 0 0.78571428 And let's consider the, um, the case where the 285714 is a repeating value. So we can continue writing this on and write 285714, 285714, etc. But let's not do that for now. It's implied. Well, first off, let's just simplify this, rewrite it as 1 half plus 0 0.285714. The 1 half is just going to account for this 0.2 going to 0.7, and that's repeating. We can actually represent every repeating decimal as a geometric series. Consider the case of the 0 0.3333 repeating. All we did was recognize that if we have 0 0.3, what we have to add to it to get 0 0.33 is 0 0.03. So we essentially multiplied 0 0.3 times 1 over 10 in order to insert the repeating value at the correct position. Now let's consider the case of 0 0.285714 repeating. Well, what we need to do is actually have 0 0.285714 shifted a certain number of decimals to 0 0.0000028571428. So that when we add it to this value of 0 0.285714, we end up with our repeating value. And then we do this over and over and over again. So instead of having uh, the, the repeating value multiplied by one tenth, what we do is actually multiply it by the number. Uh, of shifts. So in this case it would be 10 to the negative 6 because we have to shift um, our decimal over 6 spaces, the number of values in our repeating portion of the decimal, and then we can represent that as our infinite geometric sum. So in this case we'd have our sum is equal to 1 half plus our initial value which we'll show as one zero point two eight. 5714, that's our initial repeating, repeating value, over 1 minus our r value, which we discussed is the, the, the shift of 6 decimal places, which is 10 to the negative 6. Now, if you, if you plug this into your calculator, what you'll find is that this is actually equal to 1 half plus 2 over 7, and that's equal to 11 over 14. So using geometric series, you can actually represent any uh, infinitely repeating decimal as a fraction. And now for the last example to kind of, you know, nail it down, I'm going to present a more real world slash applicable um, uh, problem. And so this problem is actually from Boas's book, Math Methods for the Physical Sciences, which I'll call Phi Psi. Um, and so let's read the problem. So, in a water purification process, one nth of the impurity is removed in the first stage. In each succeeding stage, the amount of impurity removed is one nth of that removed in the preceding stage. So it's a geometric series that's going to be infinite. Show that if, F, if n equals 2, the water can be made as pure as you like, but if n equals 3, at least one half of the impurity will remain, no matter how many stages are used. So let's do the first case, where n equals 2. Well, let's say the total impurity is equal to 1, whatever unit that is, I, ha I have absolutely no idea. And that, um, so this is our start, is equal to 1. And that what we're removing, which each step, is 1 half of that. So it's going to be 1 half, and then 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth, 1 fourth times 1 half is 1 eighth, etc for infinity. So this should be a series, actually. 
So let's actually calculate now. So our, our total impurity is going to be equal to our start of 1 minus our infinite geometric series of 1 half plus 1 fourth of 1 eighth. That's what we're removing, right? And so we can actually represent this as total impurity equals 1 minus the sum of our geometric series, A over 1 minus R, which is 1 half, in this case, 1 half over 1 minus 1 half. 1 half over 1 minus 1 half is 1 half over 1 half, which is 1. So 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. Therefore, if we go infinitely long in the water purification process, eventually all the impurity will be removed and we'll have perfectly pure water. Of course, this, this isn't going to happen in real life, but I think it's, this is a more concrete example. Now let's consider the, the instance where n equals 3. So let's do the same exact thing. So our total impurity is going to be equal to 1 minus the sum of our geometric series of this time 1 third plus, or since it's sum, I'll put 1 third and 1 ninth, 1 over 27, etc., etc. So this is going to be equal to 1 minus a over 1 minus r, which is equal to 1 minus 1 third over 1 minus 1 third is equal to 1 minus 1 third over 2 thirds right? One-third over two-thirds is equal to one-half, so this is equal to one-half, so it's equal to one minus one-half equals one-half. So in the case where n equals three, no matter how long and no matter how many water filtration or purification processes we go through, we'll never get rid of half of the total water impurity, no matter how long we go. So this is a Another example of using geometric series in a real-world application. So to kind of summarize, we talked about um, how we can represent infinite decimals as geometric series. We talked about how to recognize them. Um, and then we talked about how to get their sums and derive the formula for the sums.